Alrighty, we're about five minutes away from the drop of the puck here this evening between the the Okinawa Generations and the Bob Cajun Catfish. I think I'm saying both of those names right. I'm probably not, but either way, we got our intermediate matchup here of the evening. After this, we're going to be taking a look at the Miami Vice against the Colorado Covers to finish off our night, but for the time being, let's get to know these two rosters a little bit better. Papa Shields, Human Shields, Pip Star Lather, and Grey Ghost out there for the, the Okinawa Generations, and then for the Bob Cajun Catfish, we have... Um, the one, the only, Diener. You know him from the open committee. We got Bikido, Daddy Odona, Crusting, Busty, and Peach. You guys didn't see that. You guys didn't see my other misspelling either. It's not important. Don't don't pay attention to it. It's like somebody's lazy eye. You pretend it's not there, and you you just you look at what's right on the graphic. It's not it's not important. You see nothing. It doesn't even exist. I just fat finger my keyboard, and that's how we get this well, the workout. But anyway, um, Okinawa Generations not in the best part of the standings. They're they're probably gonna be playing against an open team here for their spot. Of course, on the on the uh, the Okinawa Generations, they found one victory on their season and an overtime loss. They got themselves three points, half a game under the Nashville Nikonics, and about what is that six points out from getting out of the relegation position. We'll have to see how the remainder of the season goes for them. They have two matchups remaining, one being tonight. The next being against the New Jersey Minutemen, and then, of course, the Winnipeg Wrath. They're finishing their season with last season's challenger teams. What a way to just go throughout the season. That's a tough matchup. Am I missing something? Something's not right here. They're playing the North York Renegades. Nobody told me this. <laughs> uh, man, I feel bad now. They're not playing the Akana. They're playing uh, the North York Credit Games, fourth seed. That's my bad. I read the schedule wrong. Let me get let me get all my slides set up. I, I, I just, that's on me. That's 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 my oof. Who won the last game? Of course it was the Beans. Now as the Cobra is 6-4, to five, six to four, I believe the score was. Um, so the, the Bob Cajun Catfish are taking on the North York Renegades. The 4th seed taking on the 12th seed. It's going to be a good one. As long as I remembered to do everything else I was supposed to. I think we're alright. Yeah, I'm gonna. I will, we'll redo the bet. I'll put a five minute timer on it whenever that ends. It might, it might be halfway through the first, doesn't matter. We should be alright now.
just like clockwork, they fill into the lobby. Of course, you got Logic, Jake Drips, and Messiah going to be playing for the North York Renegades. Um, their roster consists of um, a pretty stacked roster, if I do say so myself. Um, Jake Trips, Logic, Messiah, and Pugger. Of course, you know, their top goal scorer is, in fact, Logic. Has 44 goals on his 12 games played. He has 67 points this season. Um, you're going to want to watch him as he's out there on the ice. Uh, they're doing without their second most goal scorer. Pugger having 24 goals, Messiah having 20, Jake Trips having 15. Um, needless to say, there's going to be a lot of goals on the ice from both directions if I do have to make my prediction. I think we're going to have more than 10 goals this matchup. It's going to be... A very interesting one at that. But uh, make sure to get your predictions in. We got a lot of points on the line. But uh, the Catfish not looking in favor, which is to be expected. You know, 12th seed going against the 4th seed. That should be pretty much set in stone what the outcome is. But nonetheless, upsets do in fact happen. And a lot of people can make a lot of money. Who's to say what might happen here tonight? Of course, the North York Renegades having four matchups this week. Um, if the if the Winnipeg Rats game doesn't get you know moved on, uh, the Winnipeg Rats will be a forfeited game for the North York Renegades. That's still up for discussion. Um, of course, they just played against the El Paso Coyotes. The situation of that game is unknown, but here tonight they're playing two of their three matchups here in week number six. The final game being against the Flint Tro the Flint Tropics, one of the Western teams trying to make a name for themselves on the East Coast. To finish off their season. It's going to be a good one. Gonna be a fun one. Maybe we'll cast it, maybe we won't. I don't really know. I don't know what my schedule's gonna look like throughout the rest of the week. All I know is I'm busy Friday. Other than that, I have no idea. But, um... Yeah, North York got a stacked schedule. They already finished one of their games. They're playing one of their games now, and they got one in the future remaining here in this final week of Season 3. Then for the Bob Cajun Catfish, of course, out there on the ice, they gotta be playing against the Hamilton Boneyard Boys, the Pittsburgh Vipers. And then the North York Renegades. I think they're playing the Vipers right after this. I don't know if anyone's casting that or not. But, um, yeah, Bobcasian having one of the hardest ends of the season that I have ever seen. Um, of course, they play against the fourth seed. And then later on tonight, they play against the first seed. An undefeated first seed, the Pittsburgh Vipers, making a name to claim here in the intermediate division. I think they're going to be the biggest hurdle for anyone looking to promote up in a challenger. Challenger only having eight teams. Um... Nobody's going to get rele relegated from the Challenger division this season. But um, that leaves a lot more room for intermediate teams to fight their way up from the uh, the midsection of the division. Top eight teams make it into the postseason for the intermediate division. Um, of course, we're doing the same style of bracket that we did last season. Just instead of there being Challenger teams involved, we just seed it out for the intermediate division. First two teams get a bye into the semifinals. Third and fourth place getting a bye into the quarterfinals. And then I think fifth place takes on eighth place. And then sixth and seventh play each other. So it's going to be an interesting dilemma that we have as we progress throughout the postseason. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I can't really say for certain, but I studied the bracket a few times. I'm like 98% sure that's what the bracket is. And uh, we'll have to keep our eyes open as we progress throughout week number six for any big games. Flint Traffic's on the outside knocking in. Um, they, they got a big three games here this week as they're tied for a promotional spot to get into the Challenger for the next season. Um, a big hill to climb from the bottom up, but nonetheless, it is one that is in fact possible. You've seen it with the, uh, the Carolina Car... Or, or not Carolina. <laughs> the Colorado Cobras. They made their way up um, last season as the... The Carolina Cardinals, I want to say, was their name before they rebranded. But uh, they made it up as the, I want to say, sixth seed from the Challenger Division. They made themselves known getting up into pro. And, um, you know, the hill is possible to climb. All six parties ready to rock, ready to roll. We're taking it down to the ice. Caucasian on the right side. North York on the left. We're going to get this puck dropped. The game is underway. An immediate shot and an immediate goal for Jake Drips. Bringing it out loud and proud for the North York Renegades. And I uh, forgot to change the Boston Big Beats goal horn, so you get that at least once. Three seconds into this first period of action. The puck drop, immediate shot, immediate goal. First goal of the match. And a heavy one at that. 
going to take this one down the near side, make it a claim while they're the fourth seed in the intermediate division. That's not at all what I wanted to be playing. Nice pass out in front. Goes past Messiah out to Jake. Jake here with the back hand pass over to Logic. Logic picking this one up with the LED stick. Finds Messiah. Pass over to Jake. Jake here off the back end. Able to shoot that one in past the goaltender. And what a nice little Kucherov move. Able to open up the near side post. And a good shot there. Four minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the first period of action. And my prediction of more than 10 goals is starting to look pretty all right. Logic, trying to take this one through the neutral zone. Beckito able to knock that one loose. It goes off Diener. Back to the defensive end. Here's Jake Trips. Able to retrieve this one back to his own defensive end. With a little sliver of tape on a stick. Not sure what that's all about. But Logic able to try to take this one down the near side. Daddy Donut forcing him back to the defensive end. Here's Jake Trips down towards the far side. Able to throw this one past off the far side glass. Messiah Beckito do battle. Finds his way back over to Daddy Donut off the back and whips this one down near side. Here's Diener with the little demon wings. Trying to take this one down the near side. Off the floor, him knocked loose by Messiah. Jake Trips gonna be the first man to this one. Bakito here with possession, knocked loose. Here's Jake Trips. Jake off the back end. Looking for Messiah off the forehand. Swing and a miss. Goes off Daddy Donut off Logic's forehead. Diener trying to apply pressure to Logic. Able to take this one away. Tries a little fake down the near side. Able to find Messiah. Messiah looking to dangle his way in. Bakito off Logic. Logic here down the near side, trying to bring this one out around off the backhand. Throws this one down behind the defensive end for the catfish. Here's Daddy Donut off the backhand. Goes off Diener. Here's Jake back behind his own cage, off into the corner, goes off the side of his stick. Logic retrieves this one back behind his own cage, finds Messiah waiting for that one down the near side. Diener stopping him up, down towards the near side, forced over to Jake. Jake here off the forehand, pass over to Logic, goes off the top side of the head, goes over to Daddy O'Donut. Daddy off of Messiah, down towards the near side, trying to bring this one into the offensive end. Offensive end for the Renegades. Diener having other planes, down towards the near side, shot goes off Logic, back into the defensive end for the Catfish. Akito, turns to the top side, Daddy O'Donut off the forehand, pass down towards the near side, yet for Diener. Goes out in front, Daddy off. Off the hip, goes off to Messiah. Messiah here with one man to beat. Shot off to Jake. He shoots. He scores off of the side of the cheek. He makes it 3 0 for the hat trick. Good possession, good control, and I think that might have been a goal stolen. I'm not entirely sure. But three minutes remain. Three goals have been had. Laser beat for the Renegades makes it 3 0. Daddy O'Donut looking to retrieve this one down from the corner off the forehand over to Diener. Diener along the top side point trying to take this one off the tip of the stick. Down low goes off Jake. Jake here off the back end. Throws this one over to Logic with a nice little saucer shuffleboard pass going off of Bekito. Bekito here off the back end. Stopped up by Jake for a moment down into the near side corner. The dump in from Bekito. Out in front. Jake off the back hand. Stopped up. Here's Logic. Logic tries to dangle his way through. Not quite able to finesse his way through. Not quite able to get Bekito to uh, buy his wares for $1.50. Daddy O'Donut able to pop that one in off the near side slot. With two minutes, 26 seconds remaining, we have a two-goal difference. The goals don't stop coming. Logic here looking to take this one back down. Goes off Bekito from the post. Jake not able to pounce on that one in time. Daddy O'Donut off Messiah down to the near side. Here's Bekito off the backhand. Stopped up by Logic. Logic down to the corner. Continues the battle with Bekito. Goes off Jake Drips down the near side. Diener the first man to this one off the forehand. Throws this one out from the defensive end over the stick of Logic in the neutral zone. Here's Messiah back behind his own netting. Looking to take this one down the near side. Pass over to Jake off the boards. And a shot goes off the far side and wide. Logic off Daddy O'Donut down in the corner. Trying to keep this one back behind his own cage for the catfish. Off of the shot. Scores. Messiah from the point. Good feed from Logic. And they make it 4-1. to one. Opportunistic at its core. And a beautiful shot labeled for the roof. Finds the peanut butter he left on the top shelf. With 1 minute 51 remaining in the first. The difference is down to 3. Messiah back in over to Jake. Jake off the back end. Throws it on target. And that's the fifth goal for the North York Renegades. Weak, lame. A little shade coming out from the Bob Cajun catfish. But um, it's 5-1 now. Take him as they come. You leave him as they go. Good shot down from Diener. Goes through traffic down to the near side corner for the North York Renegades. Here's Jake. Pass over to Logic. The captain throws his one top side. <laughs> I miss your mom. <laughs> Jake trying to take this one through center lane. Off the forehand shot. Scores. He makes it 6-1 to one as Shay's being thrown in the chat. Very entertaining. I like it. <laughs> Diener getting a touch on this one. Back to Daddy O'Donut. Brought down by Jake Drip. Trying to take this battle in the corner. Back out to the point. Messiah drives it in. Forehand back in. So he scores. Oh, man. Makito, you got to play the game. Good shot, makes it seven to one. We're in Brazil. 
And if you don't know what soccer or hockey is, you have no idea what that means. Logic down the near side. Paquito trying to take this one out from the point. Back to his own defensive end. Jake Drips trying to take this one down towards the near side. Leaving that one in its midst. A lot of dust has been risen from that play. Daddy O'Donut off Logic. Top side boards. Looking for that shot over to Jake. Jake here dangles past Diener. Trying to take this one down the near side. Here's Paquito with possession. Off the tip of the stick. Not quite able to take charge. Jake over to Logic. From the point over to Messiah to the top side. Messiah a little behind on that play. As the puck was thrown a little too far forward. Daddy O'Donut. Bekito down the near side for the catfish. Able to get this one out. Goes off Logic. Logic here off the backhand. Stopped up by Bekito. Trying to get this one through the blue line. And sent down to the near side. Messiah dangles down center avenue. Off the tip of the stick. Not quite able to take it on the curve. Shot. Jake scores. And his double hat trick is completed. We're not even out of the first yet. Renegades came to play. They look to advance themselves up the standings even farther. They want that buy and they want it bad. 30 seconds remain in this first period of action. 8 to 1. Shot scores. Logic makes it 9 to 1. Right from the faceoff, getting it in. Getting it while it's hot. 26 remain in this first period of action. It's been a big one. 10 goals have been scored. Jake looking to make it 11. Down to the near side. Here's Daddy O'Donut. Pressured up by Logic. Sends it to the top side. Boards Jake Trips. Trying to take this one out. It goes off by Kido. Over to Logic. Shot. Scores. He makes it 10 to 1. And we're one goal away from ending this one early. I haven't seen one of these in the longest time. Logic shoots in. That's the game. Logic ends that one with a hat trick. And uh, the Catfish... Not the warm-up they wanted for the Pittsburgh Vipers, but a good one at that. Thank you for the five gifted, Irvion. You're a real G. But that's going to do it for the ball game. That's that's it. That's the end of it. Uh, it was a 10-goal mercy. And, uh, man. Wow. That is... That's an eventful game right there. A lot of, Like I said, a lot of goals are scored. This is going to be a goal-scoring game, and I did not expect it to be that kind of goal-scoring. As the final score is 11 to 1. Uh, of course, the Catfish had 100% on their shots. 14 passes along the way. Uh, possession time relatively even, all things considered. Who is Irvion? I don't know. I haven't seen him before. He must be new. Man, what a way. What a way to get a. <laughs> what a way to fill the time. We got one more game here on the ESBO network. Coming up at 9.30, Miami Vice, Colorado Cobra. It's going to be a big one. Going to be a strong one. You're not going to want to miss it here in the Pro Division. If you're not familiar with how SPL is structured, there are four main divisions in our main part of the league. We have Open Division down at the bottom. That's where you start off. we got about 10 teams in each conference. we got two conferences down there. You promote up into the Intermediate Division, which has 18 teams this season. We started with 21. A few people disbanded, but nonetheless, we still have the main structure of that division. Then after you get above the Intermediate Division, you go into Challenger, which has eight teams. We started with 10, but um, we're not playing that song again. No, I'm not doing it. We start with 10 teams in the Challenger Division, two teams disbanded during the first few days of the season. But... um. Nonetheless, here we are with eight. Two promotional spots are open for the Intermediate Division. Top eight of the Intermediate Division make it into the playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a good one. going to be a fun one. Playoffs start on Monday if all games are finished for each of these divisions. Of course, Pro Division at the top. The best of the best. We're going to be taking a look at some of the best in the professional division here at 930. It's going to be interesting. Thank you, everybody, for the gifted subs. Irvion, zero. And uh, Renard coming in a clutch with another gifted sub, trying to beat out, um, trying to beat out Irvion. Irvion took your spot, Renard. We'll have to see this battle continue. It's, it's like an anime plot line. But we got about 15 minutes to burn until our next matchup. It's going to be a good one. If you're not familiar with standings in the professional division, of course. We have the Miami Vice in first place. Cur no, actually, the Colorado Cobras played a game previously. They have 26 standing points as they took a victory over the Boston Big Beans earlier on this evening. Irvion coming out with 10 gifted subs. Look at him go. He's made a statement. Bernard, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Everybody's getting the hype train going. I've never had a hype train before. This is wild. A lot of people call it the scam train, and I can see why. <laughs> But uh, Miami Vice, Colorado Cobras coming up next. The SBO Network. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. I wish someone would gift me a sub. I don't even think I'm a sub on this channel. 
I'm not. Yeah, Renard's gifted like 20 subs in five weeks. He's been like the, the overall arch. Then Irv comes in out of nowhere with the assist. Well, we got a good matchup. We got one remaining matchup. I don't know if there's a 10 o'clock matchup or not, but if there is, Cape said he was going to try to cast it. Um, I haven't seen a 10 o'clock match, so uh, this will be the last of the evening. 